Roland released their TR505 drum machine in 1986, quickly overshadowed by the 707 and the previously released 909. The 505 was considered an entry-level drum machine, it had no individual outputs, and on paper it didn't seem like much. But I'll let you in on a little secret. The TR505 has an incredibly punchy snare and a great kick. And if you work those two sounds a little bit, you'll have a perfect drum machine for making tight, a solid, slick 80s pop sound. And today I'm going to show you how. And here's the final mix. Let's hear that first and I'll break it down for you afterwards. <laughs> So at the end here you can hear the drums in isolation. So there's not much going on and that's the key to making a punchy, streamlined, slick uh, drum pattern in an 80s style. Not too much going on at the same time. Here are the drums. And uh, if I just enable the kick and uh, let that go for a little while and I'll add on the different parts and we'll see what makes up this uh, complete drum track and pattern. So a little bit of variation in the kick pattern. Let's add the congas. We have some wood. Cowbell. And claps. Start from the beginning. And hats. The snare. And the toms. I'm using reverb and delays on some of the drum hits here, not everyone. Uh, and on the first pair of congas, I'm using a uh, room reverb on the on the lower one, but on the higher one, I'm using the room reverb and some delays. And they're not straight delays; they are dotted delays. So when the delay hits, it adds a pattern of its own that's breaking up the four on the floor feel of the rest of the track. That's very important. We can uh, listen to how it sounds without a dotted pattern. Let's find that here. It might have worked, but I think it sounds much more interesting when we have a dotted delay. It creates a sort of offbeat and that's uh, that adds texture without cluttering up the arrangement. It's still streamlined, it's still slick, but it adds a little bit of interest uh, for the listener. Uh, the same with the woods here. I have that delay going as well. And pay attention to the um, uh, levels of delays. It's not always the same uh, level of delays. So some will be more prominent, some will be more laid back in terms of the overall uh, level of the delay.
And of course, none of the hits strike at the same time. That's also very important to uh, not add, add cluttering and building up levels inside the drum patterns that you don't want to, uh, yeah, to upset any compressors, etc. you might have on the master. So if you don't want too much uh, accent on certain hits, don't make um, the drums hit at the same time, except for the kick and snare and the more uh, major uh, drum sounds in an arrangement. We have the cowbell. No delays on that one. So with the cowbell, I uh, added four hits, or is it five? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five hits. And I then went in and made a, um, a fade out on them so they, it, it sounds uh, more like a, a delay, but it's actually uh, wave forms added together and uh, with, with their levels turned down a notch for each hit. So it g gives you another sort of um, sound to the delay-like pattern. And then we have the claps. I have two claps. One of the claps uh, has got a lot of reverb on it. That one. But the other one, it's uh, basically the same uh, technique as I used on the cowbell. I've uh, recorded uh, multiple hits and then added a fade out to those hits. So instead of using a delay uh, unit, de delay effect on them, I sort of play or program the delays in terms of audio. It gives a another feel to the sound of it. And that one also has uh, less reverb on it than the um, single hit, which has a lot of reverb, so it also adds a little bit of texture, a little bit of difference between those claps, even though it is the same clap. The 505 has just one hand clap. And we have to have some hats, of course, and I'm always, nearly always using this technique I'm about to show you, where I layer down one hat every second beat. Between that, I add the same uh, hat uh, with its level turned down and that gives the first uh, track here a accent that mimics what you would do when you'd program the 505 or other drum machines, where you could program accents, usually on the 1 and 3 and 5, etc., to sort of make it stand out a little bit from the, the hat coming straight after. Pay also attention to how I uh, missed a uh, little uh, hat here. That's intentional, of course, at the end of that bar. Again, to add a little bit uh, of tension, texture, interest for the listener, whatever you'd like to call it. So the hats uh, are doing that. I didn't mention it, but on all those other drum hits here, I used very little in terms of uh, EQ. It was mainly send effects. Yeah, I didn't use any EQ at all on these, except for the crash. I'll come back to the crash later. But on the hats, I've made it so that um, the first part, or the first track, which you might call the accent track, has a high-pass filter around 300 hertz, while the second one has a high-pass filter around 600 hertz. And that makes the first one sound a little bit more beefy, but again with a lot of uh, low end taken out, if you could say that about a sort of high frequency drum sound, but nevertheless uh, high passing it, taking out everything below 300 and 600, uh, makes it not interfere with the snare later on. This is with no high passing on the accent track. So you can hear a little bit of bump in the sound if I um, don't have any high passing on it. High passing is very, very important to get rid of um, clutter in the lower end. Everything adds up, even hi-hat tracks. So these are the hats and that leaves us with the kick and snare, which is by far the most important thing. 
in uh, getting this track, uh, drum track, drum pattern, to sound tight and streamlined and slick uh, as I wanted it to be. In itself, the 505 snare especially is kind of clunky. It's it's a great snare, my one of my absolute favorite snares, and uh, much more so than the 909. But it can sound kind of clunky, just straight out of the box. So let's break it down, what I've done with the snare and kick. And here is the snare. And this is just a single hit, there's no layering going on here, so it's much more simple in that way than many of the snares I usually have in my songs, where there's multiple snares layered and uh, things tend to get very complicated. Here it's not complicated. I have only one effect going on the, on the snare here, and that is a um, Valhalla tiled room, so it's a lexicon tiled room basically. So that's all that's going on to give it a little bit of uh, space. And on the insert I only have one uh, plugin going, and that is the CLA Drums uh, plugin. And the cool thing about this is that you can uh, use this on different types of drums, kicks, snare, toms, hats, etc. But what I found is that it sounds absolutely best on snares when you have it in kick mode. Remember, use any tool, use any technique. If it sounds good, it's good, regardless of what uh, the labels are saying or what the manual is saying or what everybody else is saying. If it sounds good, it's good. And I found that uh, having this in kick mode works wonders on snares. So these are my settings. I uh, don't add much in terms of bass. I put the treble all the way down almost, so there's very little high EQ going on. I compress it a little bit and I take the reverb off because I had uh, the other type of reverb on it from before and I put it on a little bit of gate. So that's basically all I'm doing with this plugin, so let's check it out. And bypass. So it adds a little bit more punch uh, with the plugin off. But that punch uh, is more like a raw 505 sound and I don't want that much punch and that much clunkiness in the snare. It takes away from the tight sound and the streamlined sound. So uh, I have to use this plugin to, um, to get the sound I want. So that's that, and there's one more thing I do to the snare, and that is I'm using EQ. Here I have the EQ for the snare drum. Let's check it out. Bypass. Solo, bypassed. EQ. So we add a little bit of thump here. Uh, this is a shelving EQ and I have it around yeah 400 Hertz. So I bump uh, quite a bit here. And I also boost a lot at uh, 25k. So it's just sort of adding a nice sheen to everything. But I also take away a little bit around, uh, let's say 17 or seven, 16 or 17 K. To get rid of that ugly, sort of hard spiked S. So in the mix, It sounds kind of thick and nice and tight. So this is uh, how I set up the EQ for uh, this snare drum. And that leaves the kick. And on the kick, I have no insert effects, no plugins going, no EQ going inside the door, but I add a little bit here on this EQ. So let's uh, check out that as well. Bypassed.
a little bit dull. So it gets a little bit more click in the attack and as such it uh, cuts through a little bit more especially when we add the bass on top and uh, a little bit, bit more beef. You could do all of this with uh, almost any EQ inside the door or EQ plugins. I have a nice sounding EQ here, so I uh, choose to use uh, this one on the on my snare and kicks. And so coming back to this, uh, we have the toms. I didn't mention them earlier. The toms have uh, a little bit of reverb on them as well. We can listen to them in isolation here together with the kick. So I have a little bit of reverb on the um, tight ambience gate, so there's not really much in terms of long tails or anything, but I have a little bit of gating reverb gate on the first two toms, not on the lowest one. So in isolation they sound pretty dry, and that's basically uh, intentional. Uh, I think that tom sound sounds absolutely best in a tight drum arrangement with very little in terms of reverb on them. The only thing I changed out throughout the course of a track with toms is that I um, sort of uh, give the patterns a little bit of variation throughout. So each time they do a tom fill, I don't do exactly the same fill or not at the same time in terms of the different beats. So let's check that out in uh, the arrangement. So I uh, mute the one hat hit uh, when I also hit the lower tom. So I'm not especially concerned with uh, making this sounding like a real drummer, although that is a technique and a, uh, a way of doing it that some like to do. They uh, take away all the hats, for instance, uh, when the toms are, toms are playing to mimic what a real drummer would do. He has only two arms and two feet, so he can't do everything at once and that's a, a way you, you might want to go. I'm not so concerned about that because I make synth pop so uh, that's not too important to me but uh, I take away some hits to make the, the, the breaks breathe a little bit more. And finally we have the crash. And the crash are receiving the same EQ as the snare from that external uh, EQ, but I also take away a lot of uh, low end here. I high pass it as high as uh, 1.5 kilohertz basically plus 1.6. So uh, it's not uh, much left in terms of uh, low end, but that's also very important. I really don't like too much low end on a crash in synth pop. So uh, not much going on there. So that was, was with the high pass off. And again, this is straight out of the 505 and the crash on the 505 doesn't sound all that good because they had to cut the reverb, reverb tail, memory limitations, etc. So uh, to compensate for that, I have a lot of reverb going on it to sort of uh, stretch out the tail with uh, reverb as the tool. And as for the final balance, the level between the different parts of the drum track, well, it boils down to um, what you like and what you want to emphasize in terms of drum sounds. The kick and the bass will have to work together. <laughs> And the rule of thumb is that if you want to emphasize the kick drum, then you have to turn down the bass, of course, and vice versa. You can't put emphasis on both at the same time. That's very difficult and will often lead to mud or, yeah, sort of messy low end. 
So uh, on some songs, and you can hear this throughout the, the 80s as well, some songs are very bass heavy, some are very kick heavy. The snare, well, uh, in the 80s, there were a lot of uh, snares very high up in the mix. But again, no hard rules. There are always exceptions to those rules. It's a creative choice. Well, there you have it. I think that 505 is incredibly undervalued, underestimated, and its kick and snare are by far the greatest kicks and snare coming out of any Roland drum machine for that slick, tight 80s pop sound, mind you. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a lot. And uh, until next time, cheers.